cool. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Make Anything. I'm Devin, and today I've got another great tutorial that I think you'll find super useful. So one of the awesome things about 3D printing is that you can apply it to basically everything else you do. Personally, my other big hobby is nature photography. I like to climb big trees or hang off the edge of canyons and take crazy photos. But because of that, I have a lot of lens caps that fall off my camera and end up in ravines or rivers where they will never be recovered. And while I could go on eBay, wait a month and pay two bucks to get a lens cap shipped from China, I thought it would be way cooler and a great lesson for you guys if I made my own lens caps. So that's what we're going to do today. Even if you're not huge photography fans, this project is a great example of how you can print one piece that has moving parts within it. And that's always super cool. So yeah, let's get right into SolidWorks and I'll show you how it's done. Alright, so we'll make a new part, of course. And I'm going to draw on the right plane with a center line coming from the origin. Because we're going to start with a revolve. Uh, the lens cap being a very round part. The revolve feature is a great way to get a lot of detail in there with a the single sketch. Uh, for example, I know the distance from the front of the lens to the glass is 2.5 millimeters, so I make that 2 millimeters to make sure it doesn't actually contact the glass. We just want to grip the threads on the inside of the lens, but we don't want to touch the glass. If you dimension a line that's parallel to the center line, and you click the center line as well, you can set the dimension for the diameter of the revolved part. I'm making this dimension 57 millimeters because I'm making this lens cap for a 58 millimeter lens and I want it to fit snugly and then I'll add teeth later that actually grip onto the side of the lens cap. The rest of this I'm kind of just doing educated guesses. So let's revolve that. And you can see we've already got a pretty established part just from that one revolve. The next thing we want to do is start splitting up this part because we're going to have some moving pieces. So I'm going to find the center line here. And then I'm going to create a, a notch, which is kind of just like a triangular cutout, which will allow the parts to slide back and forth without coming apart. So right now it's all wobbly, but I'll just set some dimensions. So make sure those lines are equal, vertical, and I'm going to set a distance of 33 millimeters because I think that's just a good width for the buttons on the side. Uh, it's important to offset the line and create a tolerance because for any parts that fit together, you need some space in between or they just won't fit. I found 0.3 millimeters works great for my printer. It's not too loose or too tight. So I'm going to do a cut extrude from the middle plane and just keep all the parts. So now I'm kind of starting to create my left and right buttons. I'm going to do a few more steps here that are kind of tough to explain, but basically the buttons and the main part of the frame are going to be sliding back and forth across each other. And I want to create some overlap so that there's no gaps created when you press the buttons in or when you release them. So by deselecting auto select on the feature scope, with extrudes, you can select just specific parts that you want to apply to. So you can see I just cut out that circle from the parts that will make the main part of the lens cap. So to create the buttons, um, I'm actually going to do another revolve cut. And though this could be extruded, doing a revolve cut here allows me to set a dimension from this bottom plane. And I'm making that 0.25, which is going to be the gap between the buttons and the lens cap. So it's going to print with a 0.25 millimeter gap. It's kind of the same principle if you've seen my custom support video, where the printer will kind of print over thin air, but since there's another layer just beneath it, they'll lightly fuse and you'll be able to break it off and move the parts. I'm also going to dimension from the outside of the circle here. I'm going to make it 7 millimeters, and that's basically the width of those release buttons I'm making. Now I'll do a revolved cut, make sure the axis is that center line. 
And then I'm going to go into the feature scope again and only apply that to the button part. And that'll separate the two buttons. At this point, it's probably a good idea to start color coding parts. There's a lot of features on SolidWorks that by default merge your parts together. So if you want to make sure they stay separate, just give them all different colors. And if they accidentally merge, you'll notice right away so you don't have to go back a bunch of steps and fix it later. So we've got the two separate buttons, which is great, but we actually want the rest of the parts to be connected. So I'm going to sketch on the front of the lens cap here. But before I do that, I'm going to change this value here to give me a bit more sliding space between the front of the lens cap and the buttons. So as you can see, this new circle I'm making is the layer that's going to overlap. And I'm going to make that 1.5 millimeters, which basically sets how far in you can push the buttons before they get stopped by the main part of the lens cap. The next thing I'm going to do is extrude this and I'm going to use offset from surface and make that 0.25 to match the tolerance I created earlier between these two parts. So now you can see that the lens cap is one part, the buttons are two separate parts, and there's a 0.25 millimeter gap between them. Plus there's that overlap that allows the buttons to slide back and forth without creating any gaps. So the next step is to add those teeth that actually grip onto the inside of the lens. And I'm going to do that with another revolve. So first I'll convert these entities to once again get those points where I can constrain my new lines to. And then I'm just going to sketch out these teeth. I figure two teeth is good enough to create a decent grip. We don't want this thing to be too strong and difficult to get off. At first I started setting some values, but I decided to go online and figure out the actual pitch of the threads on the inside. So with just a little bit of googling, I found out that it's a 0.75 millimeter thread. I'll make sure this angle is 90 degrees so that it can print well. And then I'm going to revolve that part. I'm going to make sure to deselect merge result because I don't want this thread going all the way around the lens cap or it would be impossible to put on. I just want it to be on the buttons that squeeze in. So the way we're going to cut that is by going back to our earlier sketch where we cut those notches. And you can actually reselect the sketch and use it to extrude once again. So I'm going to do another extruded cut from the mid plane. And I'll make sure to use that feature scope to only select the thread. And you can select just those parts to keep. And there you go. So now you can go up into this command line and type in combine. Use the add operation to create a single part. Do that on both sides and now we have buttons with teeth. And since that merge made them both gray, I'm going to color code them again, just to be safe. So now you can kind of see how it's coming together, how the buttons will press in. And in fact, we're going to move the buttons outward a little bit so that spring is kind of preloaded. And that'll create a bit of a tighter grip onto the lens so that our lens cap doesn't end up falling off into canyons again. So by looking at this little reference, we can see that it's along the x-axis that we want to move. And you can drag the arrows on the part, or you can do it manually here in this dialog. So I set that to minus 2 millimeters, but that's looking like a bit much. So I'm going to try minus 1 now. And once again, I'm purely guessing at this point. I don't know how it's actually going to behave on a physical model. So once we print this out and try it, we'll probably have to make a couple changes. The next step at this point is to start building the actual spring. And there's a lot of different ways to make a plastic spring. It's basically any part that you can deform and will try to return to its shape. 
So to keep with the circular theme of this lens cap, I'm just going to make a circular spring. So I set the thickness here, and that kind of determines how stiff the spring will be. I'm going to guess again, and two millimeters seems all right. And now for this spring to actually do anything, we want to attach it to both sides of the lens. So for this spring to actually do anything, we want to connect it to both buttons. So I'm just making a box here so that I can get two parallel lines. And then I'll offset those by two millimeters to create the arms that connect the buttons to the spring. I'll close those up and trim everything using the power trim. That looks good. So I'll exit the sketch, do an extrude, and once again we want to offset from that surface by our magic number 0.25 millimeters so that the spring will be able to break loose and become a separate part. So as you can see by the color change, we now have just two parts. The buttons with a spring in the middle and the main lens cap. We could probably print it out as it is right now and it would work, but I'll do a little bit of prettying up. I'll put some fillets on all these edges. For one thing, it looks a little more polished, but the fillets actually add strength as well. And finally, to add in a little bit of flair, I'm going to add in the Make Anything logo. So I'll use the DXF import dialog and bring in the file I created in Illustrator. And I'll just go ahead and scale that to a size I think looks good. The circle is a little bit off, so I'm going to grab the move tool and just visually center it. That's good enough. So I can go in a cut extrude and just select the parts I want cut. And to make sure I don't cut all the way through the lens, I'll do an offset from the inside. And I'm setting that to 0.6. Which is kind of thin, and I might have to change that later on. We're just going to test it out. All right, so I got my part out of the printer. And first of all, let's just appreciate this tape estimation. <laughs> so I recently started using hairspray to get my prints to stick down really well. And it works, but the tape usually gets destroyed, so I only put tape on the part of the build plate that I'm actually printing. So I'll use my clay tool to get an edge lifted, and then I'll use my fancy butter knife to actually get the part off. So the first thing I notice is that the logo is pretty much gone. So I guess those lines were a little too thin, and when the plastic got smushed against the build plate, it basically closed those gaps. And also, the entire thing is pretty flimsy, so I can actually take it apart, and it just doesn't feel solid enough right now, so that's another thing I'll want to fix. I'll try putting it on the camera, and yeah, it fits. But that edge is a little bit too small to really handle it, and well, to be honest, <laughs> It's a little too tight, so I'm having trouble getting it off of the camera. Overall, this is a pretty great first print. I'm able to test it out and see exactly what I need to change the next time around. So now that we tested out a physical print, we can go back into SolidWorks and fix anything that didn't work quite as we wanted. For one thing, I noticed this lip was a little too thin to actually handle well, so I'm going to make that 4 millimeters. And this inside part was really thin too, which caused it to flex a bit too much. So I'll make that 2.5 millimeters. And as you can see, I'm kind of going through each feature from the beginning one at a time to make sure nothing gets screwed up along the way. So everything seems to be updating all right. Hmm, so we've got a bit of an error on this revolve. So you can open that up and right click and see what's wrong. So in this case it's overdefined, which isn't the worst error to have. If I were sending this off to a client, I would probably fix that. But in this case it's not really affecting the model, so I'm just going to leave it. 
I also noticed that the tension was pretty strong on these springs, so I'm gonna move them in a little bit more. And everything else pretty much updated itself, so that's pretty awesome. Also, while we're in here, I figure I might as well do a few more design touches. I wanna round this front of the lens cap a bit. By doing a chamfer and then a fillet, I create this edge that makes it easy to print, but still creates a nice rounded edge. So the last thing to take care of is this logo. Um, on the print, the layers were pretty squashed, so I'm gonna just go into each line here and offset it to make the cutout a little bit thicker. So I'll just offset each line by 0.2 millimeters. So that'll add 0.4 millimeters of thickness to the lines. I get this error because I use selected contours and sometimes it just is weird. But you can just ignore the error, go back into the extrude and reselect the contours. And just like that, you've got an updated cutout. Also since the lens is thicker now, we can reduce that offset so that the cutout isn't so deep. And there we go, we've got a second iteration of our lens cap that we can send to the printer once again. Okay, so with this second round of prints, I think I just about nailed it. The lens cap comes on and off pretty easily, and you can see I made the logo stick out a little bit more. I just printed with a light green from the beginning, and then I paused my print manually and switched out to black filament. I also made another version for my smaller lens. At first I just made everything the same but smaller, and that inner spring ended up becoming way too stiff. So I made another version with a ring that's a little bit thinner. And that's actually way more comfortable, it's super easy to take on and off, but it doesn't come off on accident, so that's exactly what you're looking for with a lens cap. I also have this older version I made to kind of show some variation. So you can see I did a little bit of an eyeball spring thing going on here. And I actually have the spring connecting to the outside of the lens cap too, so everything's one part. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty cool that you can take something as trivial as a camera lens cap, uh, but by adding some flair and maybe putting your logo on there, it becomes really meaningful. So that's another example of why 3D printing is just so freaking awesome. So if you want to keep seeing how you can make really simple things really cool, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> I'm good at these outros, huh? If anything, if anything, these exits, these exits are pro.